Well, that is the scene at dawn in Gunnersville, Alabama, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. This is day number two action. This is moving day 53 anglers who've worked so hard to get this once in a lifetime opportunity. And we're going to have good weather today, but that is the calm before the storm right there. Davey Hyde, only 25 will make it onto the final. Yeah, day. certainly something to think about, Tommy. You work all year long to, to make it here to the Bassmaster Classic. There's going to be 25 guys that aren't going to be able to continue after today, so that's on their mind. But the big pitcher, Hank Cherry, with almost an eight pound lead, he's thinking, man, I've got the chance. I've got the opportunity. Opportunity. He's been there before. He was close in, in his rookie season, but this time with this big lead. But you're at Gunnersville. No one is safe at Gunnersville. You got Clint Davidson in second place, 21 pounds. To be able to make up eight pounds in two days is not that big a deal at Gunnersville like it would be some other lakes. Let's take a look at footage from day one yesterday. Brandon Lester in fourth place after day one and he got an early start to his day. Look at this giant he brought into the boat very, very early. He would have a lot of faith in this particular spot right here. Here's someone to watch out for in third place after day one, John Cruz. He caught a good limit early, was leading unofficially. We were watching him. He caught a limit early, left those fish, probably left them biting, changed up, called that one on the dock a little bit later. Clint Davis, another person to keep an eye on. Obviously, he's in second place, but the other reason to keep an eye on him, he knows a little something about winning big tournaments. He has done that before. He grew up fishing here on Gunnersville. And how about Hank Cherry? Made his first big splash in the bass fishing world in the 2013 Classic, and at this Classic, he made the biggest splash of day one. 29 pounds, three ounces! 29 pounds, three ounces! 29 pounds and three ounces under those conditions. Look at those fantastic Lake Gunnersville largemouth. That's what it's all about. And look at what this one's all about. This particular one day, five fish total. Hank Cherry ranks third all time. Of course, the top spot all time is from back in 2014, right here at Lake Gunnersville. And that was Paul Mueller. So especially when you think of the conditions, that was an outstanding, outstanding effort on day number one. Will it be enough to carry him through two more days? That's the big question we face as we take a look at the rest of our top 10 there. Micah Frazier, Todd Auten making big moves throughout the course of the day yesterday. And everyone needing to make a big move today into the top 25 at least. And we're ready to go. You know, it was just a blessed day. Um, you know, when it's your turn to have a bag like that, it's your turn, hopefully. It's my turn the next two days. Regardless of catching one pound a day or 21 pounds, I'm still as happy as I could be. I appreciate where I am. I appreciate bass. I'm just glad to be here in the 50th class. Yeah, here at Gunnersville, five can be can be really good, and then um, yeah, that, that's what that's what the name of the game is going to be. Making sure we get five in the boat, and uh, then see if we can not call up from there. The main thing that's going to change today is fishing pressure with locals. That's uh, that's the only thing I'm worried about up there. I feel like. With the conditions we had yesterday, I had about as good a day as I could hope for. I had a 7.6, that was my third fish. So that goes a long way. And that 20, 21 pound range, I knew if I could get right there, I would at least keep myself in the hunt for sure. So I'm, I'm pleased with it. Well, as we take off on day number two, it's interesting to watch our anglers in the top 10 who we'll be covering today. Look how they populate through different sections of the lake. They are all over the place, Davey Hyde. No doubt about it, and you look, Hank Cherry with almost an eight pound lead with the shortest run. Man, you talk about having it made, having an eight pound lead in a short run. Some guys not making the short run, making the long run. Brandon Lester fishing farther up north than most of the anglers right where he started yesterday. But you can notice very different day today. Not nearly as much wind. There he is. God, it came off. That gummit. Oh, that was a good one too. I know I've been catching them on this bait, but I, I just, I don't feel like I found the right bait, something. I still ain't hit them like I know, I know they're here. I don't even know if it's a keeper. I thought it was a big one. Oh yeah, he's a keeper. He'll get us started. Yeah, so it's gonna be Saturday on Gunnersville tomorrow. There's probably gonna be club tournaments out there. There will be a lot of local tournaments out there, uh, or local 
fishermen out there, and that, and that's fine. You know, we all knew that coming into this tournament. Uh, you know, I've got plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. We'll we'll roll with the flow. It it ta it literally takes 20 or 30 minutes of the right place at the right time on Lake Gunnersville. Oh, yeah, that's a little better there, I think. A little better, not a big one. But... Bright sunshine this morning, not much wind. Got a bite. They ain't big, but we'll take them. Well, compared to his start yesterday, anything but a giant early in the boat is going to be a bit of a disappointment for Brandon Lester. But the good news, he is catching them steadily. Got two good keepers in the boat so far, and it's still very, very early on what is, well, to your eyes, very much a bluebird day still. You don't see as much wind, of course, as there was yesterday, which certainly complicated things for a lot of these anglers. But uh, definitely, we're still in a post frontal situation here and that's a challenge for these anglers even on one of the greatest fisheries on earth. Now let's go to the greatest fisherman on day number one of this Bassmaster Classic that would be Hank Cherry and Hank Cherry obviously not starting where he started on day number one. This causeway was one of his about, about his third spot to land on of course it was very productive for him but uh, today he's made the decision and you got to think it's a pretty good move to start his day see if he can catch him early here that could be our mercury move of the day here's Robbie Floyd. At the Bassmaster Classic, it's all about making adjustments. That's exactly what Hank Cherry did on day one. His primary stuff, unfishable. Goes to the secondary and catches 29 pounds. Then he comes back on day two, and his secondary stuff is his new primary now, but doesn't get a bite. Remember, day one in this area, he had a five fish limit within two hours and some big fish, two seven pounders in one particular spot. Well, without a bite, he has to make that adjustment, and he goes to the secondary, secondary from day number one. Now you see him hitting that riprap, and I saw not only Hank Cherry, I saw other guys moving into this area. I saw crappie fishermen catching five pounders. So when the secondary, secondary, secondary has fish on it, this could be the right adjustment. Really just wanted to get one just to get the day going. They are definitely in a different mood this morning. I've been switching back off from my 2D to my pan optics just to see if I have any followers that aren't biting or if there's anything down there. So far I haven't really even I haven't really even seen what I thought was a bass. But I didn't catch them here till the afternoon either, so yesterday. Just the back hook. Thank you, Jesus. That's one, we need four more. Confidence is everything if you're Hank Cherry having to go to the secondary spot, hitting that riprap wall that had success at yesterday, caught numerous fish, upgraded that, you know, 25 pound limit to a 29 pound limit. So having to go to the backup plan, um, throwing the jig, jerk bait, crank bait along this riprap wall. And obviously this confidence is paying off with his first bass of the day. Yeah, that first bass of the day, an impressive one. Good news for Hank Cherry right there. And with that fish, he upgrades his lead to almost nine pounds ahead of the rest of the field. Brandon Lester, a couple of fish in the boat. He's moved up into second place. But a lot of these guys are going to have to be making a move today, and it will happen. We'll carry on when we return. The 2020 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is brought to you by Power Pole, Humminbird, Minn Kota. And by 
talent. That particular piece of wood and metal right there, that is the vaunted trophy, the World Championship Trophy. Here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. Hank Cherry, the man with the head start on being the possessor of that trophy at the end of it all, but we have so much fishing to come before that time arrives. Todd Auten, one of the anglers that did very, very good on day number one, out there trying to get something started on day number two. And Todd Auten has actually classic experience, three classics before this, and he knows that the distractions at the Classic are like no other tournament. Yeah, I mean, it does, it gets to your nerves, even though, you know, I've been doing it a long time, and I guess if it didn't get to me a little bit, I wouldn't do it, wouldn't enjoy it. So it does get to your nerves a little bit, and uh, get you shook up to see that crowd and the size, you know, to coming into that excitement. It's a little bit overwhelming at times until you get your boat in the water and get lined up, the adrenaline's flowing, you know. And until you do catch that first fish, I can tell you, you're a bucket of nerves, and uh, it's just not, it, it settles your nerves so much when you catch that first fish. There's one. That's a good one, too. Don't feel it. Well, a great start for Todd Alton. He needed that. It, you, that first fish in the morning means so much. And Todd Alton had a great day yesterday with 20 pounds, and looks like he's on a good start again today. Speaking of good starts, Matt Herring is having a good start this classic. A lot of people picked him to be one of the guys you better watch the chance to win this event. A lot of experience here on Gunnersville. Also a lot of experience fishing elite tournaments and classic experience. It never gets old being at the Bassmaster Classic. No, it doesn't. It's still, you know, the adrenaline's still going, and this one means a lot. It's 50th Classic. It's right here at home. Uh, all my friends and stuff's oh, here, so. You know, I'm fishing pretty hard trying to make sure I, I get some fish, you know. Don't want to let nobody down, and oh, I, I want to get it done for myself. Got one. He ain't hooked with it. High booster got him. God, water's cold. No, heck, no, it's cold, man. <laughs> I don't know why it's just brutal. I mean, yesterday wasn't that bad. A lot of folks were saying, boy, the water gets up high here, and uh, man, Matt Heron fishing shallow is going to be the man to beat, but the weather has certainly changed up the, the dimensions of that prediction for sure, and Matt Heron feeling that wind blowing a little bit harder today than was predicted. Started out a bit milder than day number one, but it's starting to pick up. Now we're going to pick up with our tournament leader by a large margin. Hank Cherry's got him a spot that's a bit out of the wind, but Hank Cherry just going about his business as per yesterday. I just know from history, this creek holds a lot of fish this time of year. Well, he's exactly right about that. That creek holds a lot of fish this time of year, but most creeks on Gunnersville does hold fish this time of year. The key is being in the right area when you have those feeding periods. Hank Cherry fishing close to the ramp is a big advantage, and if he can keep them going on this riprap, well, you better look out.
Three more. So remember what you just heard there, Hank Cherry saying three more. Before this tournament started, he said, I'm getting the right bites if I can just get five a day. Well, on day one, he caught seven, eight keepers, was able to cull several times. That got him 29 pounds. He knows what he needs to do today. He needs to catch just five fish. The quality is there. You can see every fish he catches, the quality is there. Today, he has to maintain. He just can't run it off the road, so to speak. He has to catch five fish. Three more for Hank Cherry, and he will sustain that lead, no doubt. Yeah, his, his plan within the major game plan is going, well, it couldn't be going more according to plan, as you say. And this causeway here is about a mile-long billboard for the sport of bass fishing. If you've ever been to Lake Gunnersville, ever even just driven by Lake Gunnersville, you know what we're talking about. But right now, we're going to take a long trip up away to the upper part of the lake in a spot called Mud Creek. That's where we find our our highest standing Alabama angler right now, and that's gonna be Clint Davis. A fantastic day one for Clint Davis, 21 and a half pounds. Unfortunately, still starting his day with an eight pound deficit to Hank Cherry. Yeah, throughout the day, you, wrote, you hit this a couple of times throughout the day, there'll be the right one sitting there. Problem is, is letting it get rest in between locals. I am gonna throw a rattler vibe up there in a minute. He might keep. Oh yeah, he keeps. God, he's barely hooked too. I kind of need you to start the day, Hammer. See, he's on around here, big girl. Oh, you're not that big. You ain't gonna win the classic. Number two. I don't have to measure it, but we will. It's 17 inches. Yep. Well, when Clint Davis came into the press room after day one fishing, he said, yeah, I had a good day. I had 21 and a half, but forget about me. Ah, my area is done. It is toast. It's not gonna happen, but apparently something happening for this Alabama angler who's dreamed of this day, this point in time, all of his life. It's, I guess it's cliche, but it, it's, it is. It's, how, it's been a lifelong dream for me. Um, I, you know, it's something I've wanted to do my whole life, and and to be able to do it right here in Birmingham, it's just, I don't know, words can't describe it. It's, it's special. Man, I've wanted to fish for a living since I was 10, 12 years old. When it goes all the way back to watching Bassmasters on TNN. As long ago as that was, that's, that's how long I've wanted to do this for a living. Pretty awesome that my first one was the 50th. Uh, that's it's pretty crazy to even think that a couple of years ago I was thinking about walking away from bass fishing, and here I am in the 50th anniversary Bassmaster Classic. So I, I, I'm excited, like I'm as fired up and excited as can be, but at the same time, my my mind, where my mind is, is catching little green fish in, in Lake Guttersville. So it's you know you kind of got to have a even keel and. Worry about catching bass and not let everything get too big. Oh, Birmingham, Alabama is our fantastic host city. Birmingham has so much history with BASS, the Bassmasters, the Classic, and all of this. And here, here's something new for the Classic lineup, the Classic Kickoff Party. Bassmaster Classic Kickoff Street Party here, just, uh, just around the corner from the arena and the expo, and a chance for all the fans to interact with the pros and take, a, take advantage of all sorts of a little merchandise and giveaways and a, a lot of music, fun, food, everything. Just make it for a good time out in the street for these fans of their favorite sport, bass fishing. Of course, they kicked it off with a giant, a bang up, if you will, fireworks display as night fell. Everyone getting ready for the fishing to begin. Great way to spend the uh, afternoon and early evening, the classic street party, but let's get back out to Lake Gunnersville and the man fishing in his 12th classic. 
John Cruz had himself a good day yesterday, currently hanging in there in sixth place, so he is getting the job done. About halfway through this classic right now. His best finish was, uh, well, back in 2008 when it was even colder than it is here by a long shot. Being that I have fished 12 classics, I've never been in contention in any classic. And that's probably the most frustrating thing of my whole career up to this point has been that I've never even been in contention at the classic to, to fish so many of them. So to put a good sack on the scales to start the tournament, it means it means a lot to me. It is one of those things like, okay, all right, now we're gonna we're gonna make a run at this thing. I've I've been there and done that. I know exactly how all these procedures work. It's not about you catching anything else other than other than a bass. That's it. There he is. Smoked that mini flip out there. <laughs> He thumped it, boy. Not how I was thinking we'd be using it, but it's a, it's a start anyway. Certainly a start, a lot slower start for John Cruz than yesterday. He took the lead early on yesterday, catching a limit really fast. It did not work out for him this morning, but he's changed up fishing a road bed now, so hopefully he gets things going there with that fish. And Brandon Lester got off to a great start yesterday with a seven pounder early on. He's getting bites this morning, but the size so far just isn't there for him. Stay down. Are you hooked good? Good enough. A little bit better. Oh, slow this morning, but they're here. It's another cold morning. Wasn't expected to be quite this cold on day two, but it is, and the north wind blowing just enough to keep these guys bundled up. And the bit. fish not really wanting to cooperate. A lot of fish you hear in different anglers say, a lot of these fish are just hitting at the bait and not really eating it. But Brandon Lester has a plan A, B, C, D, and E, according to him. A lot more tricks up his sleeve. Started on my first little spot. Had four bites, caught three. Three keepers, no big ones, but nice to get three in the boat this early in the morning, you know. Um, I, I can tell they're a little bit slow again this morning. I had a couple more just hit it. That first one I hooked, he hit it and came off. So obviously he didn't get it good. And every one I've caught just had it by one hook. So water temperature is 50 degrees this morning, 50.7. So that's pretty chilly. When I started here yesterday morning, it was 52, 53. So it actually cooled off last night. It's all good, we got plenty of time. For now, Brandon Lester's gonna take off and leave that spot that's been so good to him. You know, he'll be back there at some point during the proceedings. Still a lot of fishing time left to go in these three days of fishing. The Bassmaster Classic, and from the very top of the lake, or almost to the top of the lake, we're gonna take the long trip all the way down to the bottom. Again, our anglers are fairly evenly distributed around the 70,000 acres or so of Lake Gunnersville, all the way to South Carolina's Todd Auten, guy who's gonna use a couple of techniques he's very fond of here, so it's a, it's a good place for him. Just kind of wondered about if there's any fish over here near this mud line. I hadn't fished this far over. Made a quick little pass through here yesterday, but it was real chocolate. Hopefully there might be a few more fish down through here. No. Stay on the right now. I 
got him hooked. Okay, coming in. Whoo! Man, he hit it. He hit it good. He didn't have it real good. He just barely had it. That's another one about three and a half. It was a fat. Like me. Right, that's probably that's probably my biggest one there. I'll put him with the little. All right. Fishing in his fourth classic now, Todd Auden. You have to say it, he is becoming a factor in this 50th Bassmaster Classic. Todd Auden moving up into second place. Still got a substantial lead by Hank Cherry here. All of these anglers are having to scale that mountain. They'll continue when we return. Birmingham, Alabama, absolutely a natural. For this 50th edition of the World Championship of Fishing, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. We're getting on up into the day. Day number two, we're getting close to the halfway point in these three days of fishing, which comprise this most important single event in the sport. This is Hunter Shryock, currently in 12th place, had himself a pretty respectable day on day number one and put himself in position, as a matter of fact, with 18, almost 18 and a half pounds on day number one. He's way up the lake and still looking for his second keeper of the day. How about that, boys and girls? She bit again. <clears throat> They're not big, but there's 15. Little chunks of gold for now. Mmm. Mmm. How about that? Some spider wire just squealing. 10 a.m. this morning. We're getting warmed up. And you see what happened there. That fish bit me and I didn't get her. And usually if you got your other punch rod ready, get back in there and uh, they'll bite. <clears throat> Sometimes making five, ten pitches into the same spot or same little area, you'll get bit. <clears throat> so the cold nights have oh. really put a damper on these anglers fishing up lake, farther up lake like Hunter Shrock is fishing. Clint Davis also, they both getting bites, but the size just isn't there. A lot of bites this morning, no size yet. Um, they'll pull up here sometime throughout the day, but a lot of bites, water temps cooled off uh, five, six degrees. So they're actually eating funny, man. It's been like five to one bites to catch this morning. So we'll see, they'll, they'll heat up, they'll warm up and hopefully the right ones will pull up and decide to bite here in the next few hours. Clint Davis waiting for things to warm up a little bit. He warmed up the uh, stage yesterday. Had a very good result from his day one at the Classic. 21 pounds, eight ounces. BCD, Big Clint Davis moves into second place at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. That's a better one. I'm gonna get right there by you. Number four. Unfortunately, that's our biggest one so far. Let me hit this, the anchor down here. Well, Clint Davis had a great day yesterday, weighing over 21 pounds. But talking to him after the weigh-in, he was a little less than optimistic because he said, tomorrow's Saturday, there was a lot of boats in there with me today, and tomorrow there will be 30 or 40 boats in there. And, it looks like there's some pressure there, but the size just isn't there. Clint Davis with four bites, that's 
not bad, but he just hasn't caught the size that he caught yesterday. John Cruz started this morning where he had a great start on day one. Did not get a bite, but has moved over into this creek, fishing a road bed. Throwing a little John crankbait. Um, we saw him throwing a jig a little bit, but looks like he's found another area that he's able to capitalize on and get some good fish like he did yesterday. Hopefully for John Cruz, it's gonna be his special place for day two. Hold up there, big boy. Say, hold up. That'll work. Little John Baby DD. Tied it on. Bam. No, I'm about, that's a probably, that's a solid three pounder right there. He yacked it. Put him in there with his buddy. Get in there, buddy. They're buddies. They're gonna be buddies. Let's get another one. Solid fish right there for John Cruz. Good uh, feedback after this latest move of his. Maybe it will be his special place, as you say, Davey, for today. Where's today and our leader, and Cherry has not found yet a compelling reason to move out of the general area. He's been bouncing around all day long. There's no excuse, you still gotta catch them. Everybody's dealing with the same thing. <laughs> I think it's all just timing. I really, really have some other stuff that I wanna go fish. I don't know. It's kinda hard to stop doing what's been working. Go change up, even though I did do it the first day of the tournament. So. so, the number one question in tournament fishing, whether it's a classic or a club tournament, should you stay or should you go? Hank Cherry thinks it's all about time, and he's in a good area. He knows that he caught 29 pounds yesterday, and he's going to go with his timing. I'm going to rotate these areas that were good to me in practice, that were good to me the first day of the event, and I just need to be there at the right time when those fish are feeding. First day he caught his two biggest fish right here. He's gone back to a midday. Here's the third fish of the day for Hank Cherry. Smart move, it looks like it is just timing. This is a place he fished the first morning and this morning. But here midday on day two, it seems like when he needs them both. It's been a long time since he's had a bite. This is number three and then hopefully number four. Two pretty fast. So that's two on the jerk bait, two on the blade. Four. I'm gonna stay. I've got a couple stretches on the other side that were pounded by the wind that I really didn't get to fish. Um, but I'm gonna go through this pretty thorough. Now maybe there's another one of those seven pounders hanging around in here. If we get that to bite, that puts us up there near that. 19, 20 pound mark, and where I wanted to be, the goal for the day was 20. No matter what size day you had on day number one, no one ever wants to go any of the three days of fishing at the Classic without getting a limit. Hank Cherry seems to be a lot closer to a limit at this point right there. Extending his lead past 10 pounds over his nearest pursuer, Todd Auten. Can he keep it going? We'll be back. Well, this is where it's happening, the single most important event in the sport of bass fishing. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook on Lake Gunnersville, legendary. Lake Gunnersville is a place that just keeps kicking them out no matter what kind of pressure it receives. Truly a remarkable spot. Micah Frazier, one of the anglers, having a great second day to add on to his great day number one. The young angler from Georgia is moving up the leaderboard and yesterday, well, he had himself 20 pounds and a good day. To so walk out of here with 20 pounds on day one of the 50th anniversary Bassmaster Classic, is, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I think, you know, prior to seeing 
Hank's 29 pound stringer, I would have said that it would, t it would take about 20 pounds a day to win. Um, that might not be the case now, but I hope to be able to do it again tomorrow and Sunday. A little bit better. Turn the anchor on. That's a solid three pounder there. Good fish in the live well there from Micah Frazier. One of the anglers is catching a lot of fish, but just hasn't had that big kicker like some of these other anglers. And the other end of the spectrum, Skylar Hamilton, who only caught five keepers yesterday, but they were certainly the right size. Yeah, 19 pounds and 11 ounces for the young angler from Tennessee. Putting him right behind Micah Frazier, as a matter of fact. First cast with a different spinner bait. Make sure he's got, make sure he's the, he's a keeper. I don't know where that fish was at, he wasn't on the dock. He was just out swimming around, I guess. But that's funny, I switched to a half ounce spinner bait in the first cast. I have been throwing a three quarters, which has a lot bigger blades, and they've just been hitting it. They haven't been, uh, I haven't been eating it real good. It's just, thought I might make some, a little bit smaller blades on it. First cast, caught one. Well, Skylar Hamilton making a good move there, changing not the bait because he's still throwing a spinner bait like he did yesterday, but he was throwing a three quarter ounce spinner bait yesterday around these same boat docks. And when you fish in the same depth with two different spinner baits, obviously you're gonna have to reel that three quarter ounce spinner bait faster. So that faster presentation is what those fish like. Yesterday, today, first cast with a slower presentation of that spinner bait paying off for Skylar. John Cruz, another angler that yesterday got off to a great start in a different creek than we see him here. John Cruz has also had to make some bait changes. He caught his first one on a jig, the second one on a crankbait. But Gunnersville, even though he had to make some changes, Gunnersville is alive and well. Lake Gunnersville is probably the most iconic bass fishing lake in the in the country, in the world, really. Dude, there's there's nothing like a, a five, six, eight, ten pound largemouth um, that's you know, jumping out there. And Lake Gunnersville is full of them, man. It, Lake Gunnersville is probably as healthy as I've ever seen it. There's as much grass on Lake Gunnersville right now than I've ever seen on this lake in the close to 20 years that I've been fishing it. Uh, this place is gonna be good for a long time. There he is. Little guy. He would probably make the grade, though. Oh, spunky friend. Oh, yeah. Fifteen and a half. Little yellow. The little yellow clip on him there. Three. That one's that one's positive. Only positive move for John Cruz. That's gonna help the cause for sure. So he's trying to catch up to his pace from yesterday. Now for our first look at the third Tennessee angler in our top ten. That is gonna be David Mullins. David also associated with the Tennessee River, the upper reaches of the Tennessee River, but uh, you better believe. He knows how this place can behave when conditions are a little out of the ordinary and a great day one. Get loud! Every day is doomsday for David Mullen. Well, going into this, I mean, we, you know, I'm living uh, northeast Tennessee, so we're we're the headwater of the Tennessee River, and much like the rest of the country, we've been pounded by rain, and all of our rivers are high. 
all of our lakes are high, so coming into this, I knew there was gonna be a lot of current. I think it was 14, 14 or 15. There was a lot more um, high drill and a lot more mill full, but now it seems like the eelgrass has taken over. And what that does, it eliminates a lot of lures that you can use, especially treble hook lures that, that touch that eelgrass. They're gonna get clogged up with that eelgrass. So, you know, I was fortunate to have what I had today. This one is a big one. Or I've got him snagged, one of the two. I must have him snagged because he's fighting funny. Get out of that. That's a little better. It's a little better. Number five. Getting there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Getting bit on almost every cast right there. So David Mullins of Tennessee taking big time advantage of his first appearance. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Finds himself right now as we look at our leaderboard in a virtual tie with Micah Frazier. Those two though are still second and third to Hank Cherry who took a big lead into this day and has actually extended it by a pound or so. So Hank Cherry, still the man to beat at this point, but there's a lot of fishing left to go in this classic. We'll take a break and be right back. The 2020 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is brought to you by Mercury, Nitro Boats, Abu Garcia, and by Berkeley. Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. It's the big one. Of course, it's everyone's big fantasy to go fishing at Lake Gunnersville, but we got another dimension of fantasy to investigate right now. For that, we turn to Ronnie Moore and Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. If you're one of the 53 anglers lucky enough to make it to the Bassmaster Classic, you are good. But there are a couple people who are oftentimes uh, claimed as favorites. And some of these heavy hitters here, I mean, we've got Paul Mueller, Brandon Cobb, Keith Combs, three guys that were heavily picked in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy. And after day one of competition, Keith Combs in 43rd, Brandon Cobb in 50th, Paul Mueller, he got second here in 2014, 49th place. So obviously the heavy hitters, uh, some of them were disappointed after day one, but we know day two is an opportunity to move up half the field. The top 25 will make the final day. So these guys are looking for a rebound going into the day two. And obviously a lot of fantasy fishing uh, fans and players are hoping they rebound as well. Let's take a look at what happened on day number one. This was Brandon Lester. Brandon Lester, who really is kind of a hometown favorite here. I'm talking about the Bassmaster Classic, baby. Look at that. Woo! Yeah. Big one right there on day number one for Brandon Lester. And he said if there has ever been a classic he was waiting for here on Lake Gunnersville. Interesting thing, though, earlier today, fishing just off the main river channel south of the BB Comer Bridge, it's only about a 20 to 40 yard stretch, a key little patch of grass, clean areas mixed in. Here's the amazing thing. It reloaded, but not with the quality that Brandon Lester saw on day one. And he said throughout practice, this area had 25 to 30 pounds every time he stopped. Well, what he's told us repeatedly is, yes, they do live there. John Cruz knows where they live here as well. He's had great success on Lake Gunnersville through the years and had a great day number one. 21 and a half pounds for the man with the most classics under his belt at this particular classic, this 50th edition of the Bassmaster Classic. John Cruz knows his way around. He's got experience in the classic, and that means a lot too. And it's been an interesting day two so far for John Cruz, where he caught him on day one, not home, and throughout the day, he has adjusted to this northern end of Lake Gunnersville. That'll work. Little John Baby DD. Tied it on. Bam. 
That one helps the cause right there for John Cruz. Started the day in third place, two spots behind Hank Cherry. And that's going to help Stetson Blaylock. Had a good day yesterday. He's one of the guys we had a camera on yesterday. And like, uh, like Brandon Lester, he's one of the guys who was able to get started earlier with some quality. Exactly right, Tommy. And if you really looked at day number one with Stetson Blaylock, he probably caught more keepers than anybody that we covered on Lake Gunnersville. And he said the whole key to this Bassmaster Classic, be in position going into the final day. Yeah. Yes. Check that out, baby. Well, all of that netted him about 18, a little less than 18 and a half pounds on day number one. Not enough to get him into the top 10, but we have now received some footage, and this is him at work earlier today, day two. Exactly right, earlier today, exclusive footage. Been throwing a Norman Speed N and a Booyah Hard Knocker, half ounce. And what's been interesting, really, to watch Stetson Blaylock, he is just fishing. He's not running all over Lake Gunnersville put himself in a very popular area, area that we've covered in years past, the All Reds Island area of Lake Gunnersville. And this time of year, that is where a lot of these bass are flooding to. And everybody said day number two was going to be the toughest day of this tournament. It was really cold the night before. Well, Stetson Blaylock proving midday here, well, Lake Gunnersville is starting to turn on. Stetson Blaylock, don't take your eyes off him for any reason. Now let's take a look at Hank Cherry, your leader after day number one, not with a little, but by a huge margin. 29 pounds, three ounces! 29 pounds, three ounces! Incredible, 29-3. That ranks, as a matter of fact, as the third largest five fish limit in the history of the five fish era of the Bassmaster Classic right there. Most impressive, a lot of the work done right here where we see him earlier today. Exactly right, fishing on the Browns Creek Bridge, and you cannot stress this enough. There has been so many events won on that exact stretch that you see Hank Jerry throwing his fastball, throwing a mega bass jerk bait here, but really, it's been the moves that he has made up until now in this tournament. Whether it's been living on that Browns Creek causeway, fishing very close by with a bladed jig, and you really can't stress this enough, it's making the right calls at the right time, fishing with really within sight of our takeoff there in Browns Creek. And the other side of this is so far in this event with Hank Jerry, his execution, which is critical in any tournament, his execution so far has been flawless. All right, and that expert analysis was executed by our colleague Mark Zona. Thank you for joining us now. Mark Zona, be with us till the end of this incredible tournament. But there he is, Hank Cherry on top by a huge margin. Stetson Blaylock making the big move of the morning. This is it, the Academy of Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook Academy, just one of the many exhibitors at the Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Show. Just an incredible, one of the greatest outdoor shows in all the world. So many categories represented here. So many people you see that, you, that are important in the sport of bass fishing, including some of your best friends. They're all here for this old home week for the sport of bass fishing, the number one event in the sport. And the people have turned out in droves for this one. Back out on the water is John Cruz. John started the day in third place. He's let it slide a little bit. He's dropped three places, but plenty of time left. And John Cruz just really, really happy to have a tremendous day one. From Salem, Virginia, big welcome everybody for John Cruz. Coming through that curtain, it was a little, little interesting because I didn't think I had as much as I had until I put him in the bag. Uh, once I put him in the bag, that the big one I was thinking was like a four and a half pounder, and then I, I lifted it up. I said, "Oh my God, that's almost six. And it, sure enough, it weighed five, fourteen. So it, it, it definitely uh, it made my bag jump a little bit, and it. It made my heart sputter, and then knowing that my family was out there watching and they were going to get just as excited as I was, that's was pretty cool. It's got more weight to it than the last one, I can tell you that much. Get your big butt in here. Yes, sir. Thumped it. Same, do the same bite as that last one. That last one was a smidgen short, and this one is a chunk. And that's what we're looking for right there. It's a four plus. 
went, went to swing them in the boat. I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, whoa. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Get on in there with your little friend. Get a little party in there now. Fighting for the right to party. Well, normally I don't like to do it all at one time. It's just, you know, I like to extend it out through the day, make it a str real struggle, make it tough. Do the same, he was on like the same spot, the same, same bite, just tap and just swimming with it. I was like, mm-hmm. One had it in his mouth. About ready to come out this jacket. Pretty sure you could bake potatoes inside this jacket right now. Woo. John Cruz making a lot with a little here on day number two. Compared to day number one, fishing just above Goose Pond, we're going to slide back down south here on Lake Gunnersville and really just kind of off of the main river, taking a look at Micah Frazier. And Micah Frazier, over 20 keepers on day number one. And, and really the whole theme, every time we've come to Lake Gunnersville, especially the last Bassmaster Classic, every one of these guys knows there is a home run waiting. It's like Gunnersville. I mean, you can catch a 10 pounder at any moment, you know, anything can happen. I mean, there, there's like liable to be a, a high 20 pound stringer tomorrow. And, you know, I go out there and catch upper 20s, I'm right back in it, you know, and that, that kind of equalizes, you know, that 29 pound stringer on day one. So we'll just see how it goes. I, I don't think anything yet. I just want to take it one day at a time. And um, it's tough enough to where it's, it's pretty easy to go out there and not catch them. You know, if you really look at the 2019 season, we always talk about this, doesn't matter what sport you're in, you really hear about momentum. And out of the entire field on the Elite Series, Micah Frazier, more momentum really than 95% of the field. And really the other thing about Micah Frazier, it seems this time of year when he can stay on the tail of groups of bass, that is when Micah Frazier really rises to the top. And we're starting to see that here on Lake Gunnersville five fish in the live well and he said yesterday and today he's a lot not everybody's catching big numbers of fish Micah Frazier says he's catching bunches of keepers each and every day and I know you noted that as one of the maybe the keys to success around here as we move over to David Mullins David had a good day one with 18 and a half pounds Tennessee angler who should know his way around Cuttersville pretty well and for all intents and purposes he's bearing that out for us Right dang time. Well, David Mullins a little bit late, picking up where he left off yesterday, but seems like he's ready to get that momentum going again. You talked about the momentum with Micah Frazier. This is a guy who finished last season with a lot of momentum as well. And he says, matter of fact, what he's doing here reminds him of what he was doing at Cayuga Lake. We'll talk about that a little more as we go on, but Hank Cherry still on top with the commanding lead. John Cruz making a big move, and Stetson Blaylock, the movers so far on day two. Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Classic presented by Hook. There's the scene. Birmingham, Alabama for this historic classic, the 50th edition, and a history that includes, of course, all the heroes of the sport of bass fishing, some who won classics and some who did not. It's so hard to win a Bass Masters Classic. You know, you've got Jimmy Houston, Roland Martin, and Bill Dance fished all them years, and none of them ever won the Classic. And they probably wanted it more than any man on earth. I'm going to be throwing and whining, I'm going to beat you, Roland Martin, and I'm going to beat you, Ricky Klein and Denny Brown, I'm going to beat you too. <laughs> well, those three guys that go down forever is the three of the greatest fishermen ever that never won the Classic, but they're still great. The stars never quite lined up. You know, I can remember Bill finishing second, 
Tom Mann fishing second to me, never won a classic as well. So everything's got to line up. I know Jimmy's been close. I know that Roland's been close. What a fierce competitor. Now Roland had the passion to do it. Roland wanted to win it. It was very, very, very bad. Roland Martin never won the classic. Never won the classic. This may be it. At least he's getting on. During the era, you got to remember that Roland was trying to win the classic. The classic format was different. It played completely against Roland's strengths. Now Bill, Bill was kind of in between the two. Bill, let me ask you this. You know, it's a funny thing is that you and, and, and most of our really great fishermen never seem to be able to win the Classic in four years. What do you think the reason is that? I, I can't give you an answer for it, but I do know this, that uh, every fisherman here is capable of winning. I'll, I'll never forget the day Bill Dance told me he was going to quit. It broke my heart because Bill was probably, him and Roland were the two I looked up to the most. And I, just, and I actually went up to him and I said, Bill, why in the world are you quitting? I said, you're one of the best there is. He said, Rick, I can't compete against you guys. Bill Dance, how many pounds you kick? <laughs> I crashed and burned. <laughs> when I made the Classic, this was my lifetime quest to win it. Three months I'd be preparing, health-wise, strategy. And I don't believe that those three went about it that way like I think a lot of guys that won the Classic like I did. They did it all year long, I believe, to win Angler of the Year and, and the greatness that they did. That's the only reason I can't think why Roland and a few of the other great fishermen didn't win it is they never looked at it like I did. It's not easy to win that tournament. And, you know, as good a fisherman as they were, things just never quite worked out. They get close in a few of them, but it's either your turn or it's not your turn. Would you say that uh, their career is empty because they never won one? No, but would they like to have won one? Each one of them would give. You would not know what they'd give to have that classic win sitting on their side of the ledger. Oh, you only get so many chances at a Bassmaster Classic and so many great ones have had their chances and fallen a little short. Who's going to feel the best when it's all said and done on this week? Well, that's, that's a ways off just yet, but right now Hank Cherry is the guy in charge. John Cruz, Stetson Blaylock rounding out the top three. A lot of those in the know say, though, don't take your eyes on South Carolina veteran Todd Auten. It's just grass-like clumps. A lot of it's eel grass, and every once in a while, there'll be a little meal full mixed in. But it's just uh, like a clump, and it might be a little hole, or there might be a stump or something right in there with them. There's one. Come in the boat. Woo. Wasn't quite ready for that one. That's a pretty good one. Three and a half. Solid fish right there for Todd Auten. If there's really somebody with the demeanor to win a classic, slow and steady. Well, it is Todd Auten. We're gonna head back up Lake Gunnersville right now with an angler. Well, an angler with a lot of history on Lake Gunnersville this time of year. Alabama's Matt Heron. It's just a major spawning flat up there, you know, up this river, and uh, you just got continuously got fish coming off that river, and they, they, they move up in here, and they're going eventually going to spawn in here. You know, they're staged up; they're wanting to do their deal, but this weather just keeps holding them off, man. I mean. Honestly, if it would get up to about 55 degrees, all in pad stems you see on that bank, that's straight where I'm going. I'd be doing something totally different. But, but it's like they're, they're roaming on this thing, or there's just not big concentrations where I can, you know, really pin them up. So I, I don't know. I'd like to tell you I got all the answers right now. I'm just trying to catch them, buddy. I need about three fish, and if they'll bite, I can get five, three pounders pretty fast. That'll give me two or three, four hours this afternoon and do what I gotta do. This time of year, you're dealing with little bitty windows.
Well, Matt Heron getting bites, but not the bites that he predicted here on day number two. Obviously affected with that cold night after day one. Going to head back down Lake Gunnersville right now and get to an area and an angler, Brandon Lester from Tennessee. This area of Lake Gunnersville, actually, somewhere where we commentated a victory, not in this area, but off this exact dock. Brandon Lester in the mouth of Seabold Creek, probably on the most popular dock on Lake Gunnersville. Son, that was her. <clears throat> Couldn't get her out. She got me over something, broke my line. But I felt it. It wasn't little. about what that other looked like. <laughs> mm. Start us a big side. Your leader up to this point, Hank Cherry, said the guy that wins this tournament is going to figure them out the right boat docks. And so far, well, that's Brandon Lester. Brandon Lester. No, you're right. Cherry said, if I would well, have won this thing, I will have been fishing some boat docks. And, Jerry has not felt the urge to spend a whole lot of time at the, and why would he? Started the day with an eight pound plus lead, trying to just keep it going today. You know what we gotta do? Catch big ones. It's not the size that I want, but it's better than what I had. And considering I had a pretty good lead, at this point in the day, it takes a pretty good limit of fish to take it away. But I'm not even really worried about it. Bassmaster Classic, only three days of fishing. And especially when it's at this place, you don't want to come in with 14 or, or God forbid, less than that. At the end of those three days, you want three five fish limits. Something that our leader is keenly aware of as he sits on an almost 10 pound lead. Qualifying for the Classic is what we all fish for all year long. Um, you know, there are thousands and thousands of bass fishermen that would trade places for any guy that's going to go, go across that stage today without a fish. There's nothing that's going to take the place of the Bassmaster Classic in fishing. It is and always will be the ultimate, the ultimate game, the Super Bowl.
Day two, moving day at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. At the end of this day, you have to be in the top 25, which means you have to beat more than 25 anglers on this incredible fishery, Lake Gunnersville. Tennessee River is full of lakes that are known for bass fishing for one reason or another, but this place is something special. Yeah, and that's going to be our Yamaha Unlock the Lake. And really what makes Gunnersville special is, number one, it sustains the pressure, the beat town that it gets from anglers that come from all over the country. But really the magic here, flats and grass, areas these fish can spawn, they can thrive, they can feed. And one of those anglers that has bunkered in, Skylar Hamilton from Tennessee, has basically lived on this stretch of boat docks this entire tournament. And he'll tell you, like most of the anglers in this field, so much history and so many memories. Gunnersville is a, it's an amazing fishery. I mean, I've fished here ever since I can remember. Uh, living in Tennessee is just such a phenomenal place to come down and fish. And, and as many people that fish here, it still does that. And there's not a place on the planet that I can think of other than Gunnersville that can withstand all the pressure and handle as many boats as it does and still put out the big fish that it does. Solid fish right there for Skylar Hamilton, who really has lived in Browns Creek this entire tournament. And you're starting to see something transpire on the bottom end of Lake Gunnersville, just around the corner from him. Take a look at Micah Frazier. Not only that, Hank Cherry, Todd Auten in Browns Creek. And really, it, it, we've seen this this time of year where one region, one creek of a lake fires, and obviously right now, Browns Creek is a major player and turning on late here on day two. in here. Look how white they are. There's nowhere else in this creek for them to get get ganged up in here, man. Not a, not a giant, but I almost got a feeling there's some good ones in here. That was the ugliest hook set. The dude ate it like knocked slack in it and I, I couldn't catch up with it. That's a good sign right there. Not a, not a giant, but I, I just got a feeling there's some good ones in here. Well, this bunch mm -hmm. in Browns oh, Creek, yeah. And, and in all honesty, if you look off the history, this bunch in Browns, dangerous. Dangerous. Another guy dangerous. He was dangerous before we even started, and that is going to be John Cruz. He's made up a little, a little slack so far. He had dropped down to sixth place to start the day, but he is uh, slowly, slowly working his way back into contention. He's up into fourth place right now. You can see 3 o'clock is check-in time, and we are not far from that time. And really, if you look at John Cruz's day, it's been a salvage. His primary area has fizzled out. Another angler that feels maybe that cold night hurt him, and somewhere through this day, John Cruz has kept himself in it. There he is. A good one, too. I mean, clocked it. Get your butt in here. Bingo. Bingo. Need right there. Mm. Yeah, for as many bites as we've gotten out here, you, you wonder exactly how many fish are, are down there. You know, it's crazy. Lake Gunnersville is one of those lakes. There could be a thousand of them down there. 
I don't think there's a thousand down there right now, but there could be. They move in big packs here. Let's do that again. That was exciting. Yeah, that was that was good. That's a, that's over three. That's heavy fish. Solid call right there for John Cruz. And one of the things we're seeing transpire here on Lake Gunnersville, it's one of those lakes you have to put yourself in the most popular areas of the lake. One of those anglers earlier today, Brandon Lester, loses a big one on a boat dock, catches a big one on a boat dock, and not just a boat dock, one of the best docks on the lake here in Seabold. And if they bite, this is the meat locker. You can put them away in a hurry. Come here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, it's all right. We can catch them on a jig, too. Gosh. Stay on, baby. Please stay on. That's a freaking toad out there, son. Boom! Look at that thing. Yes. I'm gonna tell you something right now. If I didn't sit down there and grab that other rod with that 20 pound vicious floor carbon on it, I would have never caught that fish. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Son, that's a big one. Six pounder all day. <laughs> For casting a jig around those bridges and little hard places like I've been doing some, I like 17 pound fluorocarbon. But I just had one jig rigged up because that's kind of been a secondary deal. I, I wasn't, ex I mean, it's just something I do in passing. So uh, I've had these docks in the back of my mind. They're always good to me. I had my flipping stick in there with 20 pound line on it. I sat down real quick and just, I don't know, something just told me I need to get to sit down there and, and put it on that 20 pound line. I had to boat, <laughs> I had to flip her over that rope. I mean, that's a six pounder all day long. Might as well just boat flip you now. So I did. <laughs> Boy, that is, that is fantastically playing with fire right there, Tyler. <laughs> Does that, that, that make some, any sense? Yeah, that is some red meat for the dock fishing fans from, as you call it, the meat locker there. Hank Cherry still with the lead right now, but Brandon Lester, his plan A place, did not play as well. Today, made a crucial move. How about some bass trivia? What? Right now, how many anglers competed in that first Bassmaster Classic 50 years ago on Lake Mead? 20, 24, 28, or 32? Answer when we come back. Regents Field in our fantastic host city of Birmingham, Alabama. This is at the 50th. Bassmaster Classic, and how many anglers competed in that first one? Back on Lake Mead in 1971, 24 anglers went up on that plane and then got the word that they were gonna fish in the desert. World Championship for the first go round 50 years ago. Let's get out to Lake Gunnersville and Matt Heron, who like many of these anglers, was not expecting to get quite as cold on the second night of this tournament as it did, and he's wishing it warmed up a whole lot faster. Well, you know, the number of bites is about the same as it was. I just, I haven't been able to catch any quality fish. I don't know why. I mean, it's fish are here. I just hadn't figured out exactly where they're sitting or the better fish just haven't fed yet. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, 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 God, dog it. Then I lost it. 
Son of a... That's how you want to eat it right there. Ain't no big one, but have a little bit of help with this. Well, a critical loss right there for Matt Heron, backing it up with a solid fish. But interestingly enough, fishing just north of the BB Comer Bridge, just one of these deals. He's getting a lot of bites, but not a lot of quality bites here on day two. Back to the mouth of Seabold Creek. One of the anglers we've got our eye on, David Mullins from Tennessee, who's done everything he can to avoid the Gunnersville crowds. Leave it. Now we just need about four more go like it. I was about to pull the trigger and get out of here and I'm like, well, make a couple more casts. David Mullins, the Tennessee angler, says I feel comfortable on the Tennessee River and moreover, I feel comfortable fishing in cold water. Got his limit, but just doesn't have the size he knows he's gonna have to have to keep pace with our leader. Really, let's get down to that leader right now, Hank Cherry, and here's kind of the dynamic of what he's done this whole tournament, fishing one of the most popular areas of Lake Gunnersville, and he said, look, on day number one of this tournament, the reason I started here is because nobody else did, which stunned Hank Cherry, and he said, look, I've got other fish throughout Lake Gunnersville, but if I'm not gonna get pressured in the mouth of Browns, I will live here the entire event so far, that's exactly what he's done. Um, hadn't been a whole lot going on since uh, I felt the limit. I came to look at some off the wall stuff that I wanted to fish the first day. That's a good sign. That is a real good sign. Uh, this is just a dock rocket. Three eighths ounce. Power bait max scent chunk. If you get one to bite a jig or oh, that chunk, he is not letting go. And I take a I take a pack of the worms and I tear me a piece off. Kind of like putting extra cheese on your pizza and more scent. What I do is this jig has a keeper on it and I'm throwing a chunk right now. So I'm just gonna thread it on and go up and cover the keeper. So that way when I hang my chunk, it won't slide up the shank when I skip. I'm gonna take my old dicky do. Putting her in there. Attempting to make it look like a bluegill or something that's pulled up there and 
ready to be munched on. Boy, beautifully broken down by one of the best dock fishermen in the country, Hank Cherry. And that's the one thing we've seen in this tournament, guys fishing their strength. One of those anglers, Hunter Shryock from Ohio. And really, Hunter Shryock, a big day one, but not a lot of bites, fishing way up Gunnersville, And he is in survival mode, just trying to make our day three cut. I really don't have that many options to go to anyhow, so live and die by it. Catch up to her. Catch up to her. Don't stop. Don't stop. It can all change in a heartbeat, man. This is what we all live for. This stuff. Can go down. Knuckles, man. Let's get our heads right. We have the opportunity. That's all we can ask for. Four bites to go. Boy, I won't stop and late here on day two. You can hear it kind of in scramble mode, Hunter Schrock, but what this tournament really means to him. Absolutely. 24th place right now. Needs a little insurance before he gets back to Birmingham and the weigh-in. That's the way it's shaping up right now. Hank Cherry has done his work. He's getting up close to 15 pounds. Brandon Lester giving chase and all the rest. This is something that, you know, for a long time I've been, been dreaming about doing, uh, waiting for it to happen. I've had a burning desire to try to make it here. This is, this is the Super Bowl of bass fishing. This is what we all want to get to just so we have the opportunity to hoist that trophy, keep the money, keep everything else. I just, I just want the trophy. <laughs>The 2020 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is brought to you by Ranger Boats, Toyota, Yamaha, and by Skeeter Boats. Well, this is, of course, our look at day number two of this Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, which took place in early March. And we appreciated you being with us with that on Bassmaster Live. We appreciate you as we look back on it now. Certainly a different time now and hope you get a chance to get out on the water. And if you do, uh, just remember, as they say, to fish smart. Well, Hank Cherry, again, what a story. The guy who came so close in 2013, his very first Bassmaster Classic on Grand Lake, having a great day out here. It's a beautiful day for everyone. Joining us in our host city of Birmingham, Alabama for the 50th edition of this World Championship of Fishing. A lot of history has gone down in those 50 years. That's an understatement for sure, but Hank Cherry trying to be the guy who truly makes history this special week in 2020. Be a bass. Oh gosh, grown one. Watch out. Damn, he pulled off. Gah! Like deja vu. God dang it. Eerily similar if you look back to the 2013 classic. Same bait, fishing the same exact technique. Hank Cherry hung this fish that could have won that classic. That might be him. Oh God, stay down. Oh God, stay down, stay down. Oh God. Ain't ready yet. Ain't ready yet. Come on. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Get off rocks. Get off rocks. Come here. God! I lost.
lost a big fish this afternoon that would have given me probably an insurmountable lead, but it just wasn't in the cards. It wasn't supposed to happen, so it didn't get in the boat. So I got to go tomorrow, just put my head down, fish hard, and try to catch the five biggest ones I can and let it all lay. Well, it was a trying day. That's all I can say about that. Got everything perfect. Just did not execute on one bite. Well, Hank Cherry knows, as, as every angler knows, that's something you've got to file away very, very quickly, put it out of your mind, and get back to the work at hand. Hank Cherry knows how to do that, and we assume that's what he's going to do. Meanwhile, Brandon Lester, his A plan didn't work out so great today, made a great move to this historic boat dock, really, and still working here. Uh oh. Gosh, stay on, baby. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How fat that thing is. Golly. And mm. females done come in here, hanging out under these docks. Pudgy. I say that's a pretty good trade. What y'all think? What did I tell you yesterday morning? You can do a lot of things in 20 minutes on Lake Gunnersville. Good call right there for Brandon Lester. Really a solid last two hours of fishing here on day number two. Well, Tommy, if that game plays on day three, this can be a very interesting classic. 20 plus on day one. Looks like he's just about there for day number two as well. This crowd is ready to find out. We're going to make all those weights official. Unfortunately, only 25 will advance to day number three, and we're starting to bring them in right now, starting with Stetson Blaylock, who's not uh, strong enough to crack the top 10 on day number one, but day number two really, really got the job done. Stetson Blaylock will start in a good position. Birmingham, Alabama, get loud for Todd Otten. Oh, a solid day right there for Todd Otten. Slow, quiet, and steady. And, well, he is in the mix, fourth place with 38 pounds. Give me a little love for the cruise missile, John Cruz. The senior member of this classic crew again fishing in his 12th classic. Just enough to make 38-3 for John Cruz. 20 pounds and an ounce with 41 even. He is your brand new leader. Ah, with a big change in technique and areas here on Lake Gunnersville. Brandon Lester from Tennessee. Solid, solid day sitting with 41 pounds total in second place. Out of Lincoln to North Carolina, Hank Cherry. 29 pounds, three ounces yesterday. He needs 11.14 to take the lead back and put himself five fish away from a lifelong dream. Five fish, 16 pounds, 10 ounces with 45 pounds and 13 ounces. Hank Cherry is once again your leader at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. You have put yourself in a position that you have fought and clawed to be part of. You fought and clawed to be part of this sport. You made it, and now you're five fish away from being a Bassmaster Classic champion. How does that feel? It feels uh, surreal. You know, I, I, be, I bleed bass. Um, this is what I grew up wanting to do. This is what I grew up watching all the way back. Ray Scott, Bob Cobb, you know, all the heroes that have come and gone. Some aren't with us anymore. Some are still here. Um, you know, this is the moment. This is the time you think about. This is, it all comes down to tomorrow. I just have to go do my job, uh, control my head. I can't control the environment. I can't control the things that are going to happen around me. Uh, when one of them little green suckers bite, I just got to jerk and put them in the boat. And Lord willing, it'll be true. If it's not, it's not my time. But I think this trophy's coming back to North Carolina. 
Um, but tomorrow there are no friends. I want that trophy. I've chased that trophy my whole life in my sleep, while I'm breathing, while I'm awake, heartache, good times, bad times. I want that trophy. Well, just a little bit of what's going on inside the mind of Hank Cherry at this very, very important moment, a moment that most folks would love to be in, almost a five pound lead going into the final day of the Classic, but we always say it, that, that there's good and bad in that. Well, number one, uh, one of the biggest problems is this is Lake Gunnersville where anything can and will happen. The other side of it is, it is Hank Cherry. He came this close to lifting that trophy a few years ago, rare does that chance come around again, and he has an opportunity. Makes it all the more a don't miss episode, the next episode. When we see you next time, the final day of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. That's one, we need four more. Hank Terry! Five fish, 16 pounds, 10 ounces, with 45 pounds and 13 ounces. Hank Cherry is once again your leader at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by